Welcome to week four online module. Um, this week we are focusing on individual differences in second language learning. And I want to start by reviewing last week just a little bit because I think there's a lot of ties that happen or come between the two. Um, just really quickly, our learner characteristics and the learning conditions affect how we learn a second language. And I think we'll tie that in a little more uh, deep today. Language one do does affect the learning of language two in both positive and negative ways. We bring with us understandings in one language that may cause us to confuse uh, the way we use words or vocabulary in a second language. And, um, but also we, we bring with us understandings of the way languages work, which might affect us in a positive way. There are also similar patterns in both first and second language acquisition in grammatical morphemes, negation, and question formation. And we learned that vocabulary is a key to language acquisition and should be taught explicitly and in context of other learning. Pragmatics and pronunciation are also important pieces to second language acquisition and then we talked a little bit about some key strategies. Nolan helped us understand some non-linguistic representations as he taught us how to use a ruler in Spanish. And we learned a little bit about total physical response using the five senses and visuals and real objects to help with our learning. We also talked about similarities and differences. Jenny and Amber did a fun activity with us um, that they used to talk about the periodic table. We talked about using dialogue and familiar objects to help students define and explain their similarities and differences. We also talked about setting language objectives and providing feedback, and we looked at a student's scores and used those scores on a matrix to develop an appropriate language objective for a lesson within that content area. And I hope you had a great time and really understood how to do that. And we'll find some time to do that in your classrooms. You might also consider as you write language objectives, um, maybe write a few for the next few units. Look at some test scores if you have them and use that matrix. And that could some, that is something you could use as time for your practical experience. A great use of that time and practicing the skills at the same time. So the objectives for today um, will be to determine the factors and variables that influence second language acquisition. So we're going to be talking about learner characteristics again, and so we'll tie in last week to that. We're also going to talk about intelligence and how that plays a factor in learning a second language. We'll talk about learning aptitude and learning styles, and then we'll look at personality, attitude, motivation, and how ethnicity and social skills and social settings affect learning, as well as learner beliefs and age. So all of those things play into second language acquisition and we'll dive into that today. So before we continue, um, I want to talk a little bit about what research looks like in this area. Generally it is um, correlational studies, it's not like in a meta-analysis or super um, scientific gathering of data, it's a correlation which consists of tests that relate to language proficiency, maybe like the WIDA or another test, and then they align it with questionnaires because it's hard to measure attitudes and how people are feeling and motivation without um, asking the learner themselves. So they take those questionnaires that measure types and degrees of motivation, um, combine the two, look at the data, and kind of find correlations. The problem with this kind of study is that these correlational studies do not necessarily mean that one variable causes the other. So they're not cause, there's not necessarily that one causes something else. The, um, and so that, you know, that leaves a little bit to um, question as we look at these types of studies, and we'll talk about this throughout. Um, and so they're not super cut and dry. And so it's important that we keep that in mind. They also leave out factors such as IQ and social and educational settings. Um, and so as we go forward, we'll look at that. I'm going to stop here, and I want you to read um, an article that's maybe a little bit easier to comprehend than the information that's coming from the book and the theories and the statistics that I use. And then um, I want you to compare what you read to what we talk about, and I'll have you do that in a discussion format at the end. 
So the next step is to pull up the, the short two-page article, read, highlight that, and just be prepared to make comparisons to our discussion in just a few minutes. Also, as you completed that reflection at the beginning about how you learned or tried to learn in most cases, like in my case at least, a second language, how some of these factors influenced your learning. So I've got you're going to be have to you'll have to think a little bit today, uh, synthesize, analyze, use some of your depth of knowledge for levels to do what we're doing today. So take a few minutes and read that quick article, and then um, turn back, turn the uh, training back on.